Live at 5 will not be seen tonight so that we may bring you an LNP special presentation. Sponsored by Auto Kennel. I'm Johnny Lieberman, and you're watching LMP. What does LMP stand for? Late Night Places. Oh, yeah, that's right. I've been on there. That's a good show. <laughs> you should like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Welcome back, everybody. Tonight is a, a special night. It's a night that we have been looking forward to for a very long time. Uh, it's one of those, you asked for it and we delivered. <laughs> it's Jay Leno night, everybody. It's Jay Leno night, and that's a special night, uh, not just because Jay Leno is going to be here, but because s presented by Auto Kennel. That's right. It's the first ever uh, very special late night pleasant presentation. Late night playset present. What is it? It's a very special LNP special presentation. That can't be it. Anyway, uh, you're here on Jay Leno Night. It's presented by Auto Kennel. We're grateful to have them. We're grateful to have you with us. Uh, and uh, without much uh, fanfare tonight, we want to get right to Jay Leno. Um, a few things I have to tell you. Live at 5 will not be seen tonight. Live at 5 will be back next week at its regularly scheduled program. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5 here in the Pacific. Um, uh, tonight we have a, a pre-tape. We're not live with the audience. And uh, the reason for that is it is the Jay Leno Show. Mr. Jay Leno is very, very generous with his time. You're going to see we go all over the place. We talk a little bit about cars. We talk a lot about late night, a lot about Dave. And, um, and we find out if it was weird for him to be back here in this environment. Um, uh, it's a very special episode for us. So thank you very, very much for being here. Um, the only things we have to get out of the way are... Because it is business, and we know you're going to be watching this show, I have to tell you about GVBC merch, available from Dual Shift. Allow me to change my glasses so I can see you a little better, which I can. Hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. Oh, and the, uh, here we go. And just like this is wearing over there, that's the, this is the, you're going to want to get these uh, so that you can show your good vibes. Good vibes. Show your support of the good vibes. Available at DualShift.com. Uh, somewhere there's a pin. There's pins as well. But wait, there's more. <laughs> New Ginsu. So so good. Slice through old Ginsu. <laughs> Those were always the greatest. Can saw through a human bone and still slice this tomato paper thin. 
Uh, anyway, Dual Shift. Check out Dual Shift for all of the good vibe stuff. Also, also, please continue watching the What Are You Driving Today YouTube channel, which is uh, uh, up and running thanks to David Guardsrad. Guardsrad will not be at Breakfast Club tomorrow because he is ill. <laughs> he's got a cold. It's not COVID. He's just got a cold. He's been running too hard lately. Um that is actually all of the stuff I have to talk about. We're going to uh, uh, tell everybody about GVBC at the very end after Jay Leno. And um, do you have anything tonight? I don't think so. Do you have anything to add about Jay Leno, how it was to have him here? Don't it, don't go into it too much, but... It, it was a, it's a new way for me to see him and get to talk to him. The last time you would have seen him probably wasn't even Afghanistan. The last time you would have seen him, other than out at car stuff, like professionally, would have been at the Tonight Show. Yeah. So it would have been in the complete role reversal. Totally. We, you would have had a client there at the Tonight Show, and he would have been coming into the room saying, "I ah, have a good show and all that stuff." And <laughs> Jay Leno came to us. Jay Leno came here to the little late night playset to do our little show. That so. was really neat. Uh, obviously, this autistic brain over here who has just been, mm, I don't know late night centric its whole life um this was a special one and it was one that i didn't think was going to do for me what it did i, I think of jay leno as my car guy it's not really i don't know i didn't think it was going to do anything for me special inside and it really did so thank you to jay leno and uh without further ado we hope you enjoy please presented by once again presented by <laughs> by auto kennel presented by auto kennel um after these short words from our friends at oh so delicious hot sauce it's true oh so delicious it's a hot sauce made by bears garlic and serrano mixed with love and care you can put it on your eggs pour it on your rice it's great on a leg it's better on a slice it's oh so delicious it's a hot sauce made by bears Oh So Delicious Hot Sauce, great on everything except oatmeal. Get your bottle today at OhSoDelicious.org. One dollar from every bottle sold goes to the National Military Family Association. There you go. What are you driving today? 63356B. Right. Hey, 111. What are you driving today? back i'll kill the echo over here we're sitting here with a guy we're very lucky to have um let's see for the type of show we do there's only a couple people that would be at the very 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 top of the list the guy who's sitting next to me is one of those guys ladies and gentlemen it is my great pleasure to welcome mr jay leno why here. thank you that's very kind <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you a camera set up uh jay jay I don't know where to begin with you. I'm such a fan of yours from life. Uh, well, thanks. Well, start it any way you want. I'm, I'm the kind of guy who grew up uh, with television. And, uh, and in where the did you grow up? I grew up in Connecticut, right, right outside New York City. Right, okay. yeah, yeah, Fairfield County, if you know the area. Yeah, I know Fairfield County. You know Burr Street? You know what that is? Burr Street? Yeah. No. Oh, in Fairfield. Yeah, yeah. I actually do know Burr okay. Street in Fairfield. I grew up in Wilton, uh, okay. which was a few towns away from right, Fairfield. Right, right. To, actually, very close to where Paul Newman uh, used right. to live, if you know that area. Right, hamburger place. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that, exactly. <laughs> but growing up with television, you were the Doritos guy for me in the beginning. And it was oh, like, yeah, oh my gosh, that. through comedy and everything else, but... TV, it was the Doritos guy, then the Tonight Show, then the rest of your life, and holy cow, now the rest of the world knows about you. You're a friend through the car community, right, um, right. the host of the Tonight Show for so long. I kind of just want to pick all around with you, if that's yeah, okay. go anywhere. <laughs> He's like, start already. Gee whiz, what kind of show is this? Uh, well, first of all, what do you think about being here? Is this, is this weird to you at all? Is this weird? Huh? Is this weird? No, no, this is a bit like Rupert Pupkin, but yeah, it's, it's okay. I brought that up for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought that up for a reason. I have a clip of you uh, that 
This is the reason I, it took me so long to ask you to be here. Where is that? All right, here I got it. I'll play this clip. This was you, uh, I think, when The Tonight Show was going off the air, someone asked you about taking a souvenir from The Tonight Show set, and this is what you said. <laughs> Roll it. Roll it out. Man, awful. The furniture is not really the best, really. You know, it's, it's not couch is not really something you'd sit on, and I don't want to be one of those creepy guys that recreates it in my house like I'm Rupert Pupkin sitting home playing Tonight <laughs> well, Show. Go. So I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know what I You're would the guy. Yeah, maybe the pen and pencil set. Something. <laughs> yeah, so here we are, and this really is a testament to you and everything else. But, uh, um, uh, well, see, my situation was different. I was a stand-up comedian who was lucky enough to get the Tonight Show. But TV jobs are always tenuous, so... When you're a stand-up, you can always work somewhere. When I got started in Boston, I, I would go into bars, and I'd put a $50 bill on the table and say, on the bar, and say, can I get up and tell jokes? And if I do bad, you keep the 50. If I do good, give me my 50 back. If nobody leaves, give me the 50 back. And that worked, because there were no comedy clubs. When I was in Boston, it was mostly folk singers. Stop your war machine, you know, that kind of guy. And they have the flashlight under the chin, you know, it'd be dark and click the light, come on. Stop your war machine, man. And they'd run over there and repeat it. And it was all very, like, the comedy was sort of, you know, was serious, man. You know, this was Woodstock. This was, this was anti-war, the Phil Oaks and Tom Pack, all those kind of guys you don't even know anymore. Uh, so it was, it was a different time. So that's, so to me, I could always make a living being a comedian. You can't always make a living being on TV or being an actor because you don't have the playwright, the director, the crew. You just don't have all the things you need. Whereas with comedy, I remember I used to do a bit with sunglasses. And one time I forgot the sunglasses. And I said, throw them away because I don't have to depend on props. Uh, on this prop thing. I forgot the thing. I can't do my act. So to me, it was always just a matter of getting up and talking. So when I got the Tonight Show, oh, that was good. And <laughs> then they were going to replace me like a year or so in. And we got through that. Oh, that's good. Okay. So they're always looking to re replace you at some point. I mean, I, I remember once, uh, one time after like nine years, so we're going to replace you. I said, I've been number one for nine years. We want what's above number one. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Okay. I guess so. I don't know what's above number one. I, I don't know what to tell you guys. So to me, you know, the Tonight Show for me ended on a Thursday, and Friday I had three nights in Florida. So it was, mm. uh, you know, I was doing 150 dates a year as a stand-up when I was doing the Tonight Show. So it was always a great job and grateful, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it's like, you know, show business is like, don't fall in love with a hooker, okay? It's not going to work out. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, it'll be fun, it'll be exciting, yeah. but... It's 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 not gonna it's not gonna end well. The, I always tell people. I always meet people. My sick I got canceled. I go well. This is why they pay you a lot of money. So when it's over, you have a pile of money. <laughs> if you were a nurse or a doctor or a teacher, and you got canned, oh my God, okay. you'd be broke. Yeah. So shut up. Mm. Don't bitch and moan about it. Never explain. Never complain. Just, there go. Thank you. That's your that's your uh, that's your feeling for the business in general, just across the board, basically. Yeah, and I don't mean it to sound overly. Uh, I'm just realistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have friends that'll give me a ride to the airport, and then I have acquaintances who won't. And in show business, you have a lot of acquaintances. <laughs> you know, totally you fair. have a lot of people you know, but I would never think to call up, a, you know, back at Brandon Tartikoff, give me a ride to the airport. You know, it, it didn't work. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, you just yeah, have no, to I be do. realistic. It's the same reason, you know, I'm, I've been married for 41 years because, okay, that's my girl. I got a girl. That's my girl. Okay, fine. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, you have, it's just a matter of getting a priority. Here. It doesn't mean I'm bitter about the business. or sorry. Not at all. I love the business. It's great fun, but I'm realistic. I know what it is. You're only as good as your last joke. I, I am yeah. a huge believer in low self-esteem. <laughs> yeah? No, I think Do you it, suffer from that? No, but I think it's a key to success because you shut up. You don't, you think... You know, most people I know, and I would saw some of the Tonight Show, they don't really listen. They just wait for you to finish talking. Oh. So you go, oh, okay, kind of like I'm doing now. <laughs> uh, you know, but I mean, that's sort of what it is. So if you sort of let the other people, like when I did the Tonight Show, I hired the, what appeared to me, the best director, the best lighting. I just let them do their job. And occasionally they would go, Jay, that sucked last night. Well, they could say that to me because really, what sucked about it? Hmm. Blah, 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 blah. And our attitude was anybody could pull the chain and stop the train. You know? Interesting. And I have so many... So everybody had a voice, you mean? 
Yeah, even interns would say, I, I didn't like the thing you did last night. No okay, way. Why? Yeah, no, it was, it, it was fine because, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you Are gotta, you serious? Well, you got to feel for exactly where you are. I have so many friends that have, you know, it's, it's like the scene in The Godfather where he's in Cuba and he sees a soldier blow himself up to, and it was considered successful because he took out two cops. And I, I see shows like this. People so hate the host that they don't mind losing their job as long as that prick loses his or her job. Oh, I you know, know what you mean by you, that. You know, and that, yeah, hap that happens know. a lot. That happens a lot. It's just a matter of uh, sort of trying to be as egalitarian as you can. Like when I did the Tonight Show, I just had an office in the center of the other offices. And Debbie had the big office with the bathroom and all that stuff because she was the producer. Yeah. I'm I'm the host. I might be the star of the show, but in terms of running the show, I'm not right. the most important person. She is. So she gets a big office. You know, and if you get there at 7 and you leave at 9, you get there early and you leave late, nobody begrudges you any success that you had. I mean, there are always some that will, certainly. But, I mean, for the most part, they don't. And if your door is always open, people walk by and see me sitting in my office... I never shut the door, because that's how you get in trouble. A girl walks in, and you shut the door. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> I, used to, I used to work at the, your last offices at Tonight Show when you were in the other building, uh, Studio 11 or 9 or whatever that was. Yeah. I used to work uh, in those studios when it was Sunset Beach in the 90s when I first moved oh, here. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was our executive producer, Gary Tomlin's office, but that, that office came with a button that would shut the door. Did Debbie have that too? Well, the button doesn't. Sh well, it would the, let the door close, I guess. It, the door if you were going like, to be fired or something. In, you know, in case you get a phone call or something. Oh, but, I see. You know, I saw that with Matt Lauer. Oh, that makes sense. I, I never saw that with Matt that. Lauer. They said women who can Matt Lauer would press, and then the door would lock as if the floor. Oh dear like God! The floor no, I was not insinuating and that. And there's piranha fish or something. There, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that was no, that was just a shutdown. Like, oh, the phone rings. Oh, hang on. I had just yeah. never seen it before. I had yeah, never yeah. been at that level. My, yeah, yeah, my goodness. Yeah. Um, you know, back I think. You don't know much about me, but when I was a little kid, I interned and then production assisted at uh, 30 Rock. Okay. And I worked at Saturday Night Live, and I worked at Conan, I worked at Rosie O'Donnell when right, she used right. to have a TV show. Um, I never say I worked for The Tonight Show, because that wouldn't be true, but the truth is I worked for you for a week, on your show anyway, oh, yeah. when you came and brought The Tonight Show to New York and did it from the Saturday Night Live oh, studio. Oh, that's right. That was sort of a turning point for us, that... that uh Tell me anything you want, because all I remember is we converted it into a Blue Man Group theater for one, you know, like the grand finale of the yeah. week, and it was just, I remember well, it being a shit ton because of work. I, I, when I started, I was in Johnny's stage, which means the audience was about 50 feet away, and they went straight up. I mean, literally, almost step ladders the way you sat. Studio One around the corner. Yeah, so you look, so the people look down like this, you know. And I'm used to just sort of, you know, to me, the, the funniest sketch, you know, I was maybe laugh when Letterman did it, they would show me coming out and shake hands with the crowd, and then Dave would, I want to shake hands, and he'd be behind a glass shield, and he'd have his hand. <laughs> oh, don't his get hand, too close to Dave. He'd have his hand through the gloves. <laughs> That's and, 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 and that always That's made funny. me laugh because that really showed the difference between our styles. Yeah. Neither one is right, but they're both fine. Some people yeah. like touchy feely, and some people don't, and that, that, that worked out fine. So when I was in New York, I said, Can we make it like a club? Can we have the audience as close to me as you are? So they said, oh, be, people can, I said, so if people touch me so well, it's fine. I might get You weren't afraid of it? No. Yeah. What, what are you going to do, you know? <laughs> Some people, people don't like that. Some people don't want to be touched. <laughs> people, always amazed me. people would send me food and, ooh, I would eat it. And they go, security, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm eating these, don't eat those cookies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why? Or meatballs would come. Oh, meatballs. Oh, cool. They, you know. God, I see both sides of that. But man, if I smelled the meatballs, I'd be in there too. Exactly. <laughs> I guess, um, uh, you know, the, the Dave and Jay of it all was in the old days, I've never seen either of you better than when you were both together in those, on those shows, when you were a guest. Um, can you tell me about why you used to bring the sandwiches out and all that? Was there a reason behind that running bit where you would bring like hoagies and footlongs oh, yeah, and all yeah, that because... stuff? Oh, wait for me. Did you bring any rubber gloves? I don't need rubber any gloves. Any waiters? Huh? <laughs> These are big shoulder sandwiches. <laughs> all right. That's good. Thank oh, you very okay. much, Jay. You let me know when you're done here with the no, Mr. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You can start oh, right I one. I don't want a Mr. Beef. Thanks anyway. Oh. It's so good, huh? Uh, Did you... That, that was because... That would drive Letterman nuts. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Years ago, 
he saw me eating. I was in the dressing room eating, and I said, oh, let's do this. So the next time I was on, I brought a huge meatball sandwich, you know. And I, I stood by makeup, and Dave's comes down, and I'm like, oh, I'm eating this thing. And he goes, what, how, how could you, how could you eat that? Like, he, he, he saw what I said. I said, well, I'm going to save it and bring it out on the show, you know. Oh, my so I let God. him with that. So I walked, oh, Dave, oh, try this. Dave, oh, meatball, fabulous, you know. And he's going, no, no, get that thing away. And it was always very funny, you know. It was very funny, but I never knew there was a whole private joke in there. You were actually <laughs> yeah. doing it to, <laughs> that's great. That's well, great. yeah, but he got it, too. Sure. I mean, it was sort of. Fantastic. To me, the fun thing about, the, that was my favorite time, actually. Because there was always jokes in between the jokes, yeah. you know, which, you know, I, I, I mean, a lot of them asked me where I'd been or something. I said, oh, the old Manson place for the weekend. Seeing some of the guys. And then <laughs> let them, let them read the old Manson place. <laughs> oh, you know, it's such a family day. You know? and, and, then, and, and then we would have like three or four minutes of getting laughs where we hadn't planned it. It wasn't even on the but, script, but sure. But we, we could read each other's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You both always seem to read each other so well that you... you I, I, anyway, I know exactly what you're talking about. I guess to the point where I almost hope that... Uh, I'll just ask you, what's your beef? Do you have a beef? What's your <laughs> beef? You remember that? Yeah, remember have, that? What's your beef? I, I you used to come on all the time. Chris Elliott even uh, did it afterwards. Yeah, what's your beef? You know, all that kind of... Yeah, I mean, that was, yeah, those were always fun. I, I, that was my favorite thing to do. Oh, that's great. Um, all right, well, moving to more contemporary right. stuff. <laughs> um... Oh, yeah, no, I should ask you the one more thing. Uh, anything interesting happened on the plane on the way in? That was always a good one. You always yeah. had an airplane story. Is yeah, that just yeah. from being a stand-up comedian? You're always on the road. Yeah, you always have stories. A, yeah, I always remember the the joke that let him in laugh the funniest about the airplane. It's not about how bad the airlines were. You know, you know these regional airlines. <laughs> and, 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 and I remember, and it was an ad lib, I think, at the time. And uh, Carson said, oh, they make, you know, geez, they make so many stops. Said, well, you know, this one, they want scheduled stop. The pilot just wanted to show the plane to his friend. You know, and that's, and that's what <laughs> that's and, and that's Showing what, it off, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and Carson thought that was the funniest thing because he knew it was an ad lib. And I said, See, no, Johnny, it wasn't even scheduled. What do you mean? He just wanted to show it to his friends. You know, the, and he, he thought that was the funniest thing. What, yeah. what did that feel like, making Johnny Carson laugh? That's nothing I'll ever have an experience with. Well, you know, it's like. so funny. That's why Letterman was such a revelation for me because I grew up in New England and I never called anybody's parents by the first name I come out here just my parents uh, Bob and Agnes uh, <laughs> how are you Mr. Mrs. Manicelli you know whatever your name is. It, I couldn't call them by, but for me it would have been Jay's mom hi Jay's mom yeah yeah that's what I mean so to me it, oh, well Mr. Carson no, call me Johnny okay Oof. Johnny you, you know it's, whereas suddenly when I got on a letter I go hey Dave nice tie <laughs> you know I could I could hammer away at him <laughs> You know, in a way that you, I couldn't do with Johnny. It just seemed uh, disrespectful or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know? Oh, man, that's cool. Well, to me, it's just, you know, having never met the man, uh, it, it was Johnny. You know, grew up with watching Johnny. My dad and I, my dad uh, was obsessed with all of this stuff. He used to, um, <laughs> can, can you believe it? <laughs> he, when he was a kid, he grew up in Stanford, Connecticut. And whoever his neighbor was across the street, the mom was the secretary to the president of CBS, whatever. He used to go down and watch the Honeymooners get taped in the Ed Sullivan Theater. They would wow. take the train down and they would watch the thing live with the June Taylor dancers and the orchestra and the whole thing. Yeah. He would tell me all these stories and whatever. So I guess all of this was ingrained in me. But my dad, what I'm getting to is my dad passed away uh, when I was young. Right. And... Uh, the, the the fondest memories I have with him are him laughing when we were either watching television or movies. And very often it was comedy with either Carson or Mr. Leno here and or the Sunday afternoon movie. And one of his favorites and my favorites, <laughs> I got to bring it up and I hope it doesn't embarrass you, was a movie called Collision Course with Pat Morita. Oh, that's so bad. Isn't it? <laughs> but it was great. It's so bad it was great. And for me, it just harkens of that time of oh, movie making. It's horrible. Yeah. Oh, but it's great. It's, if anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, it's a, it's a, it's some detective cop uh, buddy movie in, in Detroit, I think, right? Right, right. yeah. You're... I mean, you remember I made you watch this a long yeah. time ago. I said, my dad and I love this movie. I, got, I don't know what you care. I don't care what you think. Pat Reed and I, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, it was terrible. But uh, what was that experience like? Were you going to be an actor? Did you want no. to, or was that just a no. job? Here's what acting is like, comedians. Okay, that is very funny. That was hilarious. Uh, let's do it again exactly the same way. Good. Okay, that was just as funny. Um, we're going to do it one more time from this angle. Good, good. That was as hilarious as the first two times. Oh, really? Uh, it's you, not enough. You get no sense. Then you wait a year <laughs> to see if it's funny or not. You know, I, I like the immediacy of doing stand-up. You know, I enjoyed that movie though. Did you have any? Fun? Do you remember making it? I mean, did you have fun? At least. I, I guess so. Maybe, uh, maybe not. <laughs> I guess so. You know, I, I would work clubs at night when I was in Detroit, so it was all right. It yeah. was, it was okay. Yeah, no, it's fine. I mean. 
I don't know how to put you on this spot. I just it, it's, there's a lot of really cute bits to it that seem well, you, like you would have created them on the spot. They wouldn't have been in the script. How much is involved in making a movie? Because something seems hilarious, and you see it on film. Oh no, that doesn't work at all. Hmm. Or just from doing the Tonight Show, having great actors on, and then seeing them in bad B movies, you go, "My God, so and so is really terrible in this." And and. They're great, and you realize it's the director, it's the, the lighting, it's it's the whole package. Yeah. Everything has to to gel, or else the whole thing goes down the tubes. You know, mm. I mean, so that's what it is about making movies. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Mr. Miyagi's very big right now. I'm just saying, you know, that Karate Kid is back. I remember Pat when he was a stand-up. In fact, he was a stand-up. Too. I, Happy Days for me is where I found. You didn't know that. that he was a stand-up. I don't know if I did. He Happy Days. He worked Vegas under the name, and part of this is incorrect. The Hip Nip. No. That was that's what it said on the front of Caesars. Wasn't he? Was he? He wasn't Arnold, but he worked at Arnold's. Yeah, yeah. He, he uh, in Happy Days, right? Yeah, yeah like Happy Days. But he was a stand-up, and he was a favorite in Vegas and the lounges and all those places. Don't forget, World War II had just been over, and he had did the Pearl Harbor jokes and yeah. all, that, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was probably great, but I guess I didn't realize even in that movie that it was two stand-up comedians working together. I don't know if I realized that. Yeah, yeah, well, oh. there you go. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, you guys, Mrs., uh, you two have been to Afghanistan together uh, mm-hmm. on a USO tour. Uh, I, I was hoping, if anything, because you you both told this to me individually, that you were you were bombed while you were there or something. What what the hell happened? Uh, Either one of you. It was a pro- it was to promote the USO. It's Al's charity, right? Oh, were Al you Roker. There when I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, I was there with Craig Robinson. Oh, okay. we, there was a bunch of people, and like he'd call about Great. someone else, I and he with. was wonderful. I got a photo there. It's a uh, it's it's you guys. Oh, Let's yeah, see. It's yeah. Craig Robinson, Eliza Schlesinger. Right. That's right. Al Roker there. Yeah. And uh, Kevin Eubanks is there, too. Kevin, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was astounded because Craig Robbins, I got up on stage and I went, these are all 19-year-old kids. I mean, everybody. And I just didn't have, because when I work, when you work a big audience, you got a couple of young references, a couple of them. Oh. And I realized, I'm dying here, you know. So, so I was just doing Joe. I mean, I just getting through it as best I could. Sure. And Craig Robinson killed. I mean, he got up, sat down <laughs> on the piano, started doing some songs, started riffing. It just killed. I said, oh, man, that's the way to do it. He was great. He was just great. Oh, he's funny in general. You guys are all funny. That's interesting, though. You add a musical element. Of course, that brings a different energy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when was the last time these guys had a guy playing piano out there? Well, Probably you know, the first time I did it was Desert Storm. That, early 90s. That was early, you know, one day a guy showed up in my garage not that long ago. He goes, hi, Miss Leno. Uh, can I show you a picture? He shows me a picture of himself, you know. I go, and, and with me in it. I go, oh. Oh yeah, yeah, man, you look great, you know. And I'm look, he's looking at me like, I so, so. And then I notice, my hair is black, and I oh, go, wow. and he, he's in, he's in his army fatigues, you know. And I'm, he goes, I'm Miss Leno, that's my dad. I was only two when that was taken. <laughs> I went, uh, oh, 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 oh. But his dad had the same fatigues for sure. As he a hat, and I'm looking at, him, he looked like his dad. And I'm thinking, I went, oh, why, is, why is my hair so dark? I, uh, well, this guy looks hopefully young. I mean, I could Service out. family, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was the son of that guy. God. So that was just um, odd. Did the son, was the son young enough, uh, old enough to remember from the photo? Or was he like baby? No, no, like, he didn't no remember. He brought way. me a picture to show me him and his dad. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember going to, to Kuwait, and we land in, uh, in um, what did we land? In Riyadh, I think it was. Yeah, and uh, so you we take a two hour helicopter, you know, the doors open, it's 120, and we land in Kuwait. And I see a bunch of guys sitting on the ground in a tank. So I command, Oh, Miss Lund, thank you. Where's the uh stage? I just stand on the tank. I stand on the tank, all right. Uh, microphone, oh, you know, I mean, like that. What? Right, so now I'm on the side. How y'all done? Everybody oh, gets. No so way. So now I, I'm shouting out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is just going to be awful, you know. So I'm just shouting out, screaming out jokes. And I see these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I realize, oh, they haven't heard a new joke in like a year. So they're just. <laughs> Any so, new material. And everything I say. <laughs> the guy, I'm going, get me more of these Kuwaiti tank shows. These are 
these, I mean, my feet are burning through from standing on this tank. But just just watching these guys, I'm thinking, oh, they, because I thought, oh, they're goofing on me, because you know, they weren't. Yeah, that's just I, how it I is. Went, oh, all right. I said, wow, God. I mean, it was yeah. actually very nice. I mean, they were great. They all wanted autographs and blah, blah. And this kid's dad was one of those guys. You do so many things. Is it possible to remember any of them individually? I mean, well, I, like well, how many dates so many. do you do a year? Not so many. Do you still do as many as you well, used, I used to, to after COVID? Well, I used to a year, but with COVID, obviously, this is now I'm starting to get back into it a little bit. So, uh, But with all of that, call it 200 a year. Uh, yeah. Uh, do, are you able to like, oh, I met you that time at Zany's and wherever the fuck, and are you able to pull, recall Am that Am I shit? able to fake that in front of people? Ah, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is what I get. Do you remember like four years ago on La Cienega waving to a guy oh, that's... at the light? I said, y- was that you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Honey, he remembered. You know, I go... All right. So you give them the moment. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, that's very polite. Go, I mean, how can you? you can't. I don't know. I've never been at your level. I can't imagine what it's like to walk down the street as Jay Leno. <laughs> it's not really. It's not, no, but believe me. It's, uh, it's not that great. It's, it's no. A, I, <laughs> go first ahead. of all, you're shuffling. You're not walking. You don't get anywhere, right? <laughs> you usually just shuffle. Well, the nice thing about it is you always get recognized as you. You know, if you're playing Dr. Kildare or you're playing somebody on ER, people stop. Could you take a look at this rash? <laughs> oh, God. So I'm not really. I mean, I would see that happen to friends that worked on, you know, General Hospital and stuff. People think they're really doctors. Whereas with me, people go, oh, I, 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 well, I just bought a 65 Pontiac. Can you? Oh, yeah, that's a 326. I mean, so I know what they're talking about. So since I talk about what I know and what I do, it, act, it actually makes an enjoyable. Okay. Confrontation. I, I like me. Confrontation. <laughs> well, <laughs> confrontation. No, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, all right. Social media wise, the latest big push, as you've heard, is Newcomb's Ranch is for sale. Right. All I have seen is everyone saying, Jay Leno should buy it. Jay Leno should buy it. I can't imagine any world where you would want to do that. Is that even no, a remote no, uh, I, possibility? No. No. Because it's, people say you don't have to buy it. That's not, oh, uh, I see. I'm still learning. Uh, no, I don't know what I would do with it. I mean, it's a, it's a great piece of property, but. Yeah. But there's no current plans for it to be a Leno's garage right, up there. Or right something. now, it has good food. The yeah. food is excellent, actually. I used to we used to go up there for breakfast, like every Friday. Oh yeah, it was great. But between fires and the fires in the summer, snow in the winter, I don't, I don't Rock know. Slide. How, I don't know how you could even keep it going. Yeah, we were talking to Matt Farah about it too, because he was talking about you know opening up another location, something like that, at the bottom of the hill, the top of the hill. That'd be cool. But it's just I don't know how you do anything other than what's there. Yeah, and then you're responsible for every accident that happens. Oh, God. Keep you know, it. Keep it. People, you know, go off the side and whatever. Um, from Newcombs to Newport. I just saw something on a YouTube thing popped up. You, you, you live in Newport, Rhode Island as well? Or do you have a place in Newport? I, I bought a place. Yeah, yeah. I love Newport. I grew up uh, oh, yeah, no, I- nice. in and around yeah, Newport. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice place. Um, I know you probably can't say exactly where you are, but yeah, uh, sure what, what led you to uh, your what? I'm, I'm, I'm on Ocean Avenue. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean... That's one of my favorite... That's the only place to drive. I took you there. It's the whole... From basically the Wellington all the way uh, to... Uh, you can take it all the way into town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife and I are driving by, by more. I said, look at that house. I go, that's unbelievable. And I said, uh, you want that house? He said, well, no, no. I said, well, let's, let's go back. So we go back. Just as the gate is opening, the gardener's coming. I said, look, the gate opened. It's a sign. <laughs> so I drove in. I went up. I knocked on the door. And the caretaker, yes. The guy goes, oh, Jay Leno, yeah, hi. Nice to meet you. How you doing? I said, is this house for sale? He goes, um, it's not on the market, but it is for sale. I said, can I take a look around? I said, look around. And I said, will you sell it furnished? Just walk away. I said, well, I could call the owner. So I get the owner on the phone. He said, can you just walk away? You know, catch it in the refrigerator, towels on the rack, just leave it. <laughs> Guy said, yeah, fine. So I wrote a check and I bought it. How long ago was this? That's amazing. Four years. Oh, this is a recent. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, oh, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. recent. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. I love Newport, Rhode Island. It's a oh, very yeah. romantic city to me. I don't know why. I know there's a crazy revolutionary history there and everything, but... Uh, um, uh, it's, I, when I was a kid, I used to explore the tunnels in Fort Adams and everything. You oh, know? yeah. It is the oldest. Uh, there are more pre-colonial homes in Newport than any other place. Yeah. It's the first Jewish settlement in the United States. I never knew that. Yeah. There's, there's a Jewish cemetery there. And you see, like, 
1580 to 1620, you know, the, you know, you know. the dates are ridiculous. Apparently yeah. a bunch of Jews on their way to Miami got lost. Oh, geez, here we go. <laughs> hey! That's, that's how it happened. Know, that's how it happened, folks. Uh, no, no, but it's fascinating. So the Kennedys got married there. JFK and Jackie got yeah, married well, in that, you, uh, that, that church, right? St. Mary's, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. And that marriage worked out well, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> to the end. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you do in Newport? Do you go there often? Okay. I mean, is that a place that, you're, that you actually spend time? Or, or is it just a nice place to have a beautiful home? Uh, well, a little bit. I don't get to that often. Oh. Uh, I'm involved with the. Uh, I do a lot of car stuff there. Oh, oh, they've got the uh, the historic uh, concord there every yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. I'm like the chairman guy. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I didn't yeah, think about that. That makes so perfect fun, sense. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I love the red parrot and Zeldas and all the army oh, yeah, and navy the, stores yeah, when I was a kid. Parrot, all the a restaurants. Little, little Wixen thingy for me, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the red. Pa- oh, yeah. Do you remember that right on the corner? Double parrot burger and. Yeah, no, I, I try to like go out a little bit more than the stay up. A little further up? Yeah, there they go. And the fudgery. Mm. What's the, oh, I never went to the fudgery. And buy a candle and a fudgery. And oh, come on. Get a whistle and a hat. And, and some saltwater taffy. And all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, do you, you know, are you, I don't think of you as a sailor, but I'm realizing no. you did grow up in well, New England. Well, you should not think of me as a sailor. <laughs> so, there's, so there's none of that. No, there's not, no place in, I would be. I would sail. I have a pool here I've never been in. I haven't been in in 30 years, but. Yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> you know, I haven't. I can't. I get up to the pool. I have that New England thing, you know. I mean, I get up to the pool and I go, really? Well, you got nothing else? You got nothing broken? <laughs> oh, really? yeah, that's a good point. Really? You get, really? What are you going to sit in the you, pool? Why? You should be busy <laughs> now right now. You're like, okay, now you're like a rich, fat guy sitting in a pool. I said, you know, I, and now I'm wet. Now what? <laughs> you know what I mean? I just, yeah. No, I haven't been. The last time I went, I think it was 89. I fixed the light. At least that was. Because <laughs> the light was well, broken, so I fixed good the light. Good job. Okay, fine. And electricity in the water is always fine. <laughs> but I got the light fixed. Okay. And, but that was the last time I went in. All right. Uh, on to cars. Yesterday at Malibu <laughs> Kitchen, you brought a remote control car. Uh, well, not there, a remote there was, control car. It was a Tesla, actually. Yeah, but you were... Like my father now. You were, you were hey, remote, you remote control, <laughs> control business there. With the, you were controlling one with your phone, it looked like. Well, yeah, that's the age we live in now. You can, you it's crazy it. to me. It's called summons. The car will come and park and go wherever you want. Is that what it is in the plat? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well the, that's on the S, too. The car... Um, the car looks like a car to me. I don't really know that much about well, Teslas yeah, other than they're amazing on paper, and you're, you're saying they're amazing. You don't have to tell me. I'm getting that as you speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Um, Can't tell? Yeah, yeah. No, it looks like a car to you. I mean, that's good that you have that identification. I guess the issue to me is it doesn't do a damn thing for me, but, man, you were talking about how this is the greatest car in the world. It's, most, it's the most amazing well, thing. Well, what, what would you want to do? For, I don't I understand what you want to do. I guess, you what, know. What's a car that does something? The last new, has this, the last new car we had was a 2015 when it was brand new M4. Four. Hmm. And and it was it was ferocious. I had driven BMWs for right, years, right. three series, M3, all that stuff. And this M4 was just it was just something else. It was all the technology, it was all the screens, it was all the ferociousness. And it for me, I then wasn't even able to drive it as well or as fast as I used to be able to drive yeah. cars. So it was almost like the car had surpassed me as a person or as a driver. And um, well, I, I find that like with almost this, everything. That's probably the wrong way. Oh, is it, maybe it's a technique <laughs> issue. Yeah, yes. I, I, you're going to get a wobble effect. That might, that might well, be it. Well, you know, I mean, as an old saying, it's more fun to drive a slow car fast yeah. than it's a fast car because you, you, you're sort of pushing it. You, you're using everything the car has. It is not overwhelming you, you know. So, so maybe that's it. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, yeah. But what do you think of it? Well, you know, to me, so many driving experiences are similar now because of the laws. You know, in the old days, you used to have push-button transmissions. You could mm. press a button. Mm-hmm. You could, it was on the floor, it was on the column, <laughs> or reverse it, zit then, then it's on this. Now everything is pretty standardized legally. You've got to have park, uh, reverse, neutral drive, like you know, all that kind of. Uh, and the Tesla is just a different experience. You know, fast cars traditionally are noisy. Well, this is a fast car that's very quiet. Mm. I mean, it's just a different experience. But it is the future. People assume because you like cars that you don't like new technology. But, uh, I mean, it's fascinating technology. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm selling my old Tesla that I bought in 2015. It's never been to the dealer. It's never had anything done really? to it. Ever. There's oh, no, yeah, all the downloads come automatically. Yeah, there's no maintenance of any kind. You need to change I the mean, oil. I mean, you could change the... Uh, the brake fluid if you want but you rarely use the brakes because you use regen you just use the brakes to come to a full stop you know you just 
take your foot off the gas and you slow down you know yeah well what how about uh, uh i don't want to get into a brand war thing but uh, compared to like the tycon like i like the tycon a lot tycon's nice but mm-hmm. i mean to me uh tesla seems to lead in battery technology everybody oh, yeah. everybody admits that i mean the you get the basic oh you get the top of the line plaid and it's 400 miles Everybody else is 265, 225, because they're difference. all latecomers and they're all adapting. For example, the reason Mercedes-Benz and Porsche have better interiors in their electric cars is they've been making interiors for 100 <laughs> years. So they've got all the connections and all the, uh, the reason Tesla is leading in battery technology is because they invented it. The longest, They started yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, so it makes sense. And... The idea that Tesla, I think, price-wise is, well, for $130,000, you can get the fastest production automobile in the world, faster than any Bugatti or Pagani or Lamborghini or anything like that. I mean, it's so crazy. It, it's it's pretty amazing. You when know? you did your record-setting uh, run the other day, mm-hmm. was that in the car that you brought, or was that in one just like it? Well, one just like yeah, it, okay. yeah. yeah. Oh, man, that's amazing to me. I, mean, I can't fathom that kind of speed. I mean, it's amazing how fast it is. Yeah, and it does it with the air conditioner. And if you choose not to use it, you would never know. You know, most traditionally cars are really fast. You're sitting there like, you know, it's, it's noisy. Get it going, yeah. Yeah, and you've got to be moving, and air's got to go through it. And mm-hmm. uh, Whereas with electric, you don't have that. I mean, I love the old technology. It, it's great. Yeah. But I, I also realize this is the future. I think eventually you're... Ferraris and Cobras will be like snowmobiles. They'll be recreational vehicles. Right. You'll take it out on the crest on a Friday night or a Saturday. Special occasion. And then Monday through Friday, you're on the 405 bumper to bumper in some sort of electric vehicle, you know? Man, I do. I think you're right. I mean, I guess oh, get yeah. on board. I mean, the great thing about, like, the plan, like, my, I took my shopping the other day. Honey, you go in the store. I'm in the car watching a movie on Netflix. <laughs> I've, I've got 23 speakers, a better sound system, a big screen. I'm like... My wife calls, you ready to go? Honey, go. No, but look at some oh. other stuff. I'm waiting for the movie. There. You know, normally, I'd be sitting there with the engine running, and it'd be hot, and then i watch yep. the temperature climb, and I'm wasting Cycling gas. Cycling back and forth. Whereas this, it was all, you just sit there, and I'm, I'm, I'm watching a movie on Netflix. Oh, it's, it's great. That's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. All right, so comfort is the future. I think so. You know, it, yeah. it's ease of maintenance. You don't do anything. There's no... That's good right now. What happens in a couple of years when, you know, stuff starts to go and you don't need to do anything? I thought I need to do anything. Well, and people, then the wheels are falling off and shit. Well, my, I bought my Tesla in 2015, so it's technically seven years old. With how many miles on it? No, but the idea is the battery is not degraded even 10%. Oh, I see. Uh, nothing is worn out. Hmm. Nothing is broken. Um. So it may have a longevity to it. It's not just going to fall apart in a few years. I don't know why it would. I mean, you have less moving parts, and electric That's motors don't. I mean, you get that big Bugatti, and it has, I think, 11 or 13 radiators. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of plumbing. Yeah. Because you have a lot of heat. I mean, power generates heat, you know. Um, so there's going to be clamps and things that loosen, and no, oil you, changes are thousands of dollars. Whereas no, there's no maintenance at all. There's no warm-up at all. I mean, the, the genius with Tesla was Elon brought that Roadster to my garage in 2007. Just finished it. I wanted to show him. Oh, okay, let's take a look. And it's nice. He goes, and I'm building supercharging stations all along the highways. You could go to Vegas or San Francisco. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, this guy thinks he's <laughs> going to be selling enough cars to keep... But he did. Yeah. Everybody else builds an electric car. Where do you charge it? Oh, anywhere. We're working on, we're working on oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna have it, but they don't have it. Uh-uh. Or, or they have some sort of lame 110 volt thing where you put quarters in a machine, whatever it is. You know. Whereas the uh, Teslas had this, and it's free. I mean, I used to have a Jag XKR, and running around town, there was a big four door Jag sitting. Mm. That was um, 80 bucks a week gas minimum. Mm. Because you're, you're really getting 11 to 13 miles around town. Stop and go, stop yeah, and go. And yeah, and every week it was 80 to 100 bucks to fill the tank. Ugh. And that's when gas was $3 a gallon. Now you're $5 a gallon. I mean, with this thing, I I just drive past the gas. Oh, okay, save 80 bucks, you know. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, and when yeah. you go to a supercharging station, it's free. 
How long does it take at a supercharging station when you stop there? You can get 80% in about 15 to 20 minutes. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's, it's great. I mean, if someone said, I'll give you 80 bucks if you stand here for 15 minutes. Okay. And you can <laughs> sit in the car and watch a movie while you're doing it. That's amazing. All right, we've all had our beverage. Um, then I get to all the stuff I really wanted to get on the card. Yeah, Rupert no Pupkin, idea. we hit that for sure. Yeah. USO, Collision Course, Newcombs. I think everything's good. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about doing this? You've said yes a bunch of times. I know we had to put it together, and it was tough and everything. I'm so grateful to you for well, doing it. Did, doing was this you. okay? Did you enjoy it at least? Are we all done already? I mean, we were wrapping it up, yeah. Oh, all right. Sure. I mean, unless you want to talk about more shit. No, I'll talk to you forever. I'm, I'm conscientious no, no. of your time. Go, no, good. What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can talk about anything. I, I've, I've known you my whole life. All right, so you know what I mean? Ask me a question. Um, all right. No, I asked you the other day about if you participated in the, the late night uh, uh, the, the, the documentary that was no, just I on recently. That's what you said. And the story's been told and everything. I said, oh, well, Bill Carter did it because he wrote the books and everything on it. Did you ever read any of the books or the, the, watch the movie or any of that shit from back in the day? I, I don't really have a big... I watched the movie... You did? Yeah, yeah, I saw it when I came out. It was on HBO. I said, I'll watch it. Oh, I can't believe I would have thought never in a million years. Okay. No, I don't I don't get angry. I just I get no I, I, I just get annoyed if people just get the facts. You know, people think, Well, you stole the show from Letterman. Dave didn't have the show. You know Johnny had the show. Johnny had the show and I was the permanent guest host for over five years. I was the only other person doing it. And NBC's thinking was we have a hugely successful show at 12.30 with Dave. And my ratings are very good when I was guest hosting. Mm -hmm. That's why they gave me the show. So let's do this. This way we have two hit shows back to back, which was true. Uh, so the idea that I would leave and go to CBS or somewhere else, uh, I mean, it was never there. Did they say it was in the movie? I can't remember. You said that you hate when they get the facts wrong. Oh, I can't remember. That. Oh, okay, okay. It wasn't, you weren't saying anything specific. It was just no, no, generically. No, I'm just saying in, in real life now what the, what the deal was. You know, so. um, the, the, the movie I remember being cartoony. Yeah, it was cartoony. It was a, like a caricature of the whole yeah, uh, situation. Yeah, Dave hated the guy that played him. And that guy's so talented, too, in other shit, in right, other right. stuff. He's so funny. Um, um, and then... Uh, f uh, I never believed that you hid in a closet. I never believed it. Did you really hide in a closet oh, yeah. like that story? Yeah, yeah. You really did? Well, what it was is I had no agent. I had no manager. Right. Okay, and there were all these rumors. So I, uh, I went over to Warren's office. I knew this meeting at 4 o'clock. And I went there. I said, oh, let me went and sat in the closet about 3.15. So I heard everything was going on. And I remember, this, this was kind of funny. I remember saying to... Uh, I remember Warren Littlefield saying, and I did it a couple of times. He said, uh, you know, Leno was asking about a few things that I know were only said in this room. And so we didn't talk to him. Well, look, from now on, we don't, even, we don't even tell our first lieutenants what goes on in here. All right? All right, fine. Everybody leaves. <laughs> I go out and fight. Uh, two days later, I see, I pass Warren in the hall. And I go, first lieutenant Jay Leno. <laughs> he goes, hey, hey, what's that? I go, what? what? What do you mean, first lieutenant? Oh, my. Just, just, just you know, like Mikhail's Navy or whatever. <laughs> no, but why did you say? Oh, you were fucking with him. And, 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 and he just, he, yeah, it was very, it was actually pretty funny. It was actually pretty I mean, funny. having worked at NBC and the bit, like I knew, the, you know, in the, in, the, in the movie, they represent like, oh, he runs across the, the midway there over to the, the commissary, but, you know, the executive building, right. the whole thing. And I just, I was like, it just, none of it makes sense to me. And then they've got, uh, uh, Rick, um, oh gosh, she's passed away now. Rick Ludwin sitting at the table eating pizza, and Jay Leno's in the closet. And I go, those guys are friends. If anything, Jay Leno's sitting at the table just being quiet, <laughs> having some pizza. No, no. So that was all fictitious for the movie. That was just bullshit from the movie. Yeah, but, that he was eating pizza. Yeah, the, the yeah, whole thing was, was a conference was, call in Boca. He was in the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but it was a real yeah, meeting. And, it was yeah. in person. Yeah, in the second meeting of the conference call in Boca, what happened there was, um, uh, I called. And I tried to reach Warren, and they said, oh, he's not, he's not in his room yet. Oh, they click. So then I called back 10 minutes later, and I said, I'll, uh, I'll try Warren again. <laughs> and I hear, hello. So, so I'm thinking, oh, he must have just got to the room. And just perchance, I said, 
Oh, you're in the restroom. Let me call you back. He goes, what? Oh, you're in the restroom. I'll call you back. And I hung up. Well, he had just been in the restroom. So it seems like you're so, just so really... He, so he called. He called Ludwin and go, I want these rooms swept. There's a bug oh, in this room. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah. So... And that one was and a coincidence. I, I, yeah, it was a coincidence. I, 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 told Ludwin, I, told, I told Ludwin that years later. And he went, oh, yeah, because he, he wanted us to sweep the room because he thought there's a book. Because he, he said, you called him as soon as he, like, two minutes of him being in the room. And, and uh, he was in the restroom. When you, and you knew he was in the restroom. But you were here. Unbelievable. Yeah, uh, Unbelievable. Uh, but I was just playing with him. But Warren was a good guy. Still is. I, I, I have met him a handful of times. She has as well. He was always very nice. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> I enjoyed that whole story. I feel like that story, uh, the story was so much bigger than had just one of you gotten the shows with no, with no, uh, any kind of controversy. You know what I mean? Like all of that worked out so well for everybody. CBS, NBC, everybody. Well, because you know, everyone in this country yeah, was talking about it. after you, but I always, who do you tackle? The guy with the football. And the Tonight Show was the football. So Number one. You, yeah, so you expect to get beat up and attacked and, you know, all of a sudden you're not funny anymore, or you change, or there's always some other aspect of it. But where does that come from? Did you, do you, I don't automatically know that. You know that from experience, right? Just from being in the business? Is that a stand-up thing? Like, or is that just somebody from New England who didn't think he would amount to the hill of beans that he has amounted well, to? Well, probably a little bit of all of those. Yeah, yeah. I mean... I'm realistic about it. I mean, well, I'll give you an example. A lot of times I would go see comedians and I would say, you know, it's good, but you know, well, you said whatever the obscenity is. You can't say that on the air. He goes, I'll change it for the show. I know, but when you audition for the show, if you use the obscenity, they assume you're going to use it on the show. Yeah. yeah. And you have these, I always thought, well thought out talks. Okay. You get it? Okay, fine. And then I'd hear later that uh, through the manager that they didn't get the show because they were too funny. And oh, Leno yeah. was afraid that they were funnier than Leno. He would get, no, the, no, it's not the case. I mean, I want, no, I want. I've totally you, heard that, by the way. Uh, You're I, right. People I, have absolutely I, I want, said that. I want you, to be, you want somebody to be successful. It makes your show look better. Agreed. You know, so the only time I saw a comic react to that was Joey Bishop. I had Joey Bishop on the show once. As sort of a part of the Rat Pack, Joey Bishop. Right. He had a show for a while. But the most bitter guy, he comes on and just doing panel like you and I, and funny. He's funny. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Mr. Joey, thanks. Great seeing you. Great seeing you. Okay. okay, my next comedian, blah, blah, Louis Anderson. <laughs> so Louis goes out, and nobody funnier than me. I love Louis. So Louis's killing doing stand up, and I feel this tug on my shoulder. Hey, hey. I go, it's Joey Bishop. What's up? You think that's funny what I did? You think he's funnier than I was? Oh, God. And I said, no. I said, no, he's, he's doing stand-up. I mean, you're just funny naturally off the cuff. You know, he's doing a routine. I'm just, I'm, and I turn and watch Louie. And he's just killing it. You know, I get this tug. Oh, you think that's good? You think that's better than what? No. And then Louie comes up. And, of course, Joey's like, Oh, <laughs> God. 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 Yeah. What's all this? Did, yeah. You know, what's... Why you, you? What are you? You're eighty something. You <laughs> had all the success from? in the world. Why? Why so bitter? What? Uh, oh my God! Was yeah. there an answer? Was he bitter in the end? Like I, well, I, I it's not my call. Yeah. But I, as I read more about him, I see that was fairly pro- prevalent. Oh, that's a shame. His show was weird. I've only seen, you know I mean I was before my well, time, but I've seen clips of it. And it stuff. was sort of. Well, I mean his talk show, his panel show, Joey Bishop show. Yeah, he won. Yeah, he. Was uh, he somebody? Made some, he said he made some mistakes. Oh, okay. His biggest mistake was he was part of the Rat Pack. I'm not sure how we get in there, but okay. And <laughs> certainly the smallest of the rats in the Rat Pack. Fair enough. Know, fair okay. enough. Fair enough. And Sinatra one time asked him to, "Oh, I can't do this thing. Could you go down and do it?" And uh, Joey said, "Yeah, you know, it's fifty grand." And now, Frank's asking a favor. Yeah, and this is years ago. This is that's still a tremendous amount of money for one night. Let's go back twenty five years. It's like a quarter million. And Frank said, "Well, this is kind of a you know I can't do it because got to get fifty. That's my price." Mm, I'm getting uncomfortable. He never worked with Sinatra. Yeah. You know, 
No, that sucks. That yeah, sucks. yeah. Was Even like, if you needed the money, I mean, it's Frank for God's sake. <laughs> Read the room. Well, I mean, whether, <laughs> it was, but you, whether it was Frank or Seinfeld or Gary Shannon, all right, <clears throat> whoever, you do it, whatever, you know, if it pays something, great. If not, you're helping out a fellow performer. I fully agree. Pay yeah. it forward. So, I mean, so that's, yeah. You just mentioned Gary Shanling, one of my all time favorites. Were you great. close with him at all? Yes, great comic. Funny guy. Really funny guy. I mean, nobody. Yeah, yeah. Shanling was was terrific. He really and w it was such a shock because he was a boxer, and he played right. basketball. It wasn't like he was, you know, unhealthy donut eating guy sitting home every day. You know, not actually. I mean, he was in shape. I think he was a stressful guy, maybe a little bit. That probably had something to do with it. But strikes me as well, yeah, a bit yeah. I don't mean neurotic that, and stressful I don't mean yeah. in a bad way. It's just. I mean, for I a comic, it it's a genetic flaw that makes you a performer. It's not a plus. It's just, yes. You know, we just happen to live in a time where it's advantageous. I mean, if, if this is the Renaissance, it would be, who's making the soldiers laugh? That guy. Well, kill him. <laughs> because, you know, there's the, we live in a time when being humorous oh, happens to pay huge dividends. You know, and but, yeah, but Gary was, I mean, the Gary Shandling show was, just great. The sitcom? It was the perfect, what's the word, antithesis for the Tonight, uh, the tonight Show. I mean, oh, uh, Larry Sanders Larry show. Larry Sanders oh, God, it was fantastic. Nothing funny. And, yeah. and uh, Rip Torn as Fred DeCoyle. Oh, Nobody. I mean, the whole thing. And, and, there were so many great ones and in there. Hank and, My boy doesn't want to do any more commercials. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, I, I remember the, one of the funniest ones to me was when um, he had Dana Carvey on. So Dana Carvey was on Larry Sanders. And he's doing, you know, the President Bush, and then he does an impression of Larry Sanders. And Gary is so hurt. Well, you know, he's doing, he's doing the whiny Gary. I remember person. they did the lit. Does my ass look big? Yeah, and the whole thing. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and, and Gary's face is just crestfallen. Yep. He's so hurt by this. I mean, yeah, it just killed me. It just really made, yeah, he was a wonderful performer. Great stand up. Yeah, yeah. We, I really miss him. I mean, it's a shame. You know, it's a shame because there are certain comics you want to grow old with. Robin Williams was one. You know, when we were kids, not kids, but young performers, the old guys were Hope and, and Rickles and George Burns and all, all those guys. Uh, um, Shecky Green, and you would go watch them, you know, and visit with them. And, and you know, oh, someday it'd be fun to be those guys. Mm -hmm. You know, and then Robin dies and Gary dies. Then you realize, oh, man, this is, this well, is not good. Did it ever occur to you that maybe you guys were those guys and you just didn't realize it in the moment? Because to a lot of us, you you are those well, guys. Well, what I mean is... You know, you, know, you might not just realize it while you're living it. Well, to when, when you, we always looked at... At a at certain it, age, you mean. We always looked at it at graduating classes. Like, when I was a senior, Seinfeld was a sophomore. So-and-so mm. was in eighth grade, you know, in, yeah, in okay. terms of how you... Coming up. The hierarchy. The, the hierarchy of it, yeah, yeah. So you, when you reach that last stage, when you're in your 70s and 80s, and, you know, like Shecky Green. Do you ever see Shecky Green live? I mean, I've seen him on do panel on other shows. No, but uh, at live, he was so funny. No. He had the greatest Sinatra joke. <laughs> do you know it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he said he gets real serious. He's laying gentlemen, you know, Frank Sinatra performing right up the street at wherever it is, you know. And, uh, I'm very great. He saved my life. Frank Sinatra saved my life. And was, he says, these six guys are kicking the shit out of me in an alley. And Frank said, he's had enough. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that that's a, good. Isn't that a great that's job? Great. Isn't that the great that's joke? great. That's <laughs> great. For every reason I said Joey should have taken the job. It's you know, a great joke. Yeah. Do you ever have a comic named Bob Smith? Uh, no. I mean, no. I know a car dealer. No, Bob Smith was <laughs> the first openly gay comedian on television. We've had him on The Tonight Show. Mm -hmm. Think about that. You couldn't say you were homosexual and be on TV. They would have, they would have clipped it. So what uh, years are we talking about here? Where are we? I think it's 94, 95. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. I think of Too Close for Comfort and Mon Monroe and all that. Jim no, no, J. Bullock. No, no. They're playing. Oh, but they weren't out. They were an effeminate or a Yeah, you know, you're 100% you're right. You know? Yes, it was implied. Yeah, and back in those days, gay meant you wore glasses and played the violin. You know, <laughs> you know, you know. What I mean, it was like they, they didn't. I don't. I'm not trying to be insulting. No, it's good. But it's it was good. that that idea yes. that uh, what it, there was no actual physical. You know, 
but Bob classy Smith, over Bob effeminate. Smith was a great writer, and uh, actually we had we had we had a lot of pushback from the network because his opening act was I'm a homosexual, mm. and he comes on and he says I'm a homosexual, and the audience ooh, but I'm currently seeing a psychiatrist. I'm also <laughs> seeing a football player and an airline pilot. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was like the greatest line. It's a slow roll. Oh, it's yeah, a and roll the out. the audience just, from that point on, it was like. He's got him, right? Yeah, who cares? <laughs> from that point, you know, funny beats everything. You brought up Louie before. One of my, I think it might be from his first one and uh, 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 first Carson appearance. And he's like, I wonder if he knows he's fat. He's like, I know what you're all thinking. I wonder if he knows he's fat. And right. boom, and then it's out of the way, oh, yeah. and then he's got them yeah, on great. the hook. Louis is great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Louis is still still good, still excellent. Yeah. Um, uh, I I think you're amazing. Um, I really do. I think that your career is amazing. I think that your life is amazing. Well, my uh, life is pretty normal, actually. That's that's maybe what you think. Uh, I, I don't know. Why? I think, what would be? Well, the way you tell it, it sounds like you haven't. You didn't come from a a, a, a family of great wealth, right? No, no, my parents. It, it, it's not like it was a home of means, and you went out and and it sounds like just worked really, really hard in a direction that you knew was going to well, get know, you where you wanted to go. Being dyslexic, my mother always told me you're going to have to work twice as hard as the other kids to get the same thing. So and you my, had that ingrained in yeah, you? Yeah, my mother's from Scotland. And when I was taking French, she had to, got to say bonjour. bonjour. You know, she'd say bonjour with a Scotch accent. I mean, just try to reach you. So nothing. It just, it just didn't work, you know. I mean, when I was in, when I was in high school, Mr. Neal, the guidance counselor, called my mother in and said, uh, Ms. Long, have you ever thought of taking Jay out of school? And my mother went, oh, No. So, you know, education is not for everyone. So. Oh, my <laughs> God. Then what, go get a job? He is that said, basically he it? He said, you know, Jay works at McDonald's after school. They have a wonderful Hamburg <laughs> University program. My mother goes, well, I don't want to, what you're talking about. I want to graduate from high school. I don't want to go to my mother. Well, just think about it. It just made me laugh. So when I got to tonight, I invited Mr. Neal. Oh, my eighth grade guy. I, I told a story on that. Oh. So well, the really thing serious. is, that's an amazing story because of where you turned out. But the truth is, I had the exact same experience. You're both laughing. They sent me – I was such a terrible student in high school yeah. because I just wouldn't do my – I couldn't do my studies. I, I had a right. similar thing right. where I just couldn't lock on to it. But meanwhile, the interaction and everything else was fine. So what they ended up doing was they said, you can't graduate on time, so we're going to send you to a – work. spending all your time in the TV studio anyway. We're going to send you to uh, do an internship at the local TV station in right. Norwell, Connecticut, News right. 12. And that's where I went my junior year. And then the senior year, that worked out well enough that the senior year I went to 30 Rock. Yeah. So literally, I kind of dropped out to go work in t television, yeah, yeah. sort of. So it's not dissimilar. I guess I, it never occurred to me. I was sort of, I went the technical route yeah, yeah. <laughs> instead of finish. Oh, I still yeah. graduated on time. I went to night school and did it all and yeah, got straight A's. Yeah. But uh, Jay has the ability, but it's not a plan. So. <laughs> That's it. Is that what they said to you? Yeah, that, that was my whole life, yeah. That's, That's the got. fun part about growing up in a small town, you know. Was yours, I thought you grew up in Boston. No, I grew up in Andover, Massachusetts, which is about oh. 35, 40 miles out. Well, no, then it is more similar. I remember when I was in the fifth grade, we had to write a paper about John Glenn circling the earth, you know. Orbiting. So, yeah, orbiting the earth. So I, I wrote my paper, and I think I got a, like a C minus, you know. So then 48 years later, I have John Glenn on the Tonight Show. Remember at age 78, he went up in space? Yeah, I do. So I called Mr. Simon, my fifth grade teacher, who I still had the phone up. This is what I mean, because they still live in the same place, you know. And I said, I said, remember I did the paper? And go, well, what? You remember I did the thing on John Glenn? I said, okay, I have the second half of my report. <laughs> okay, said, coming up. Yeah, I said, I want you to watch tonight. This is this is the second half. The first half was the written part. So he upgraded me to an A. Oh, <laughs> my mother never lived to see it. That was sad. <laughs> But yeah, so I, I called him. But I said, "Watch the show tonight, at John Glenn. We, I'm going to mention you. I'm going to talk about the report." And so he was so thrilled. He upgraded me. He graded me to an A. So I was pretty. Good. It's amazing. It's amazing. Well, that's what's funny about growing up in a small town. My teachers are still in the same home room forty years later. Mm -hmm. Ugh, hilarious. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Mine are all finally graduating. Yeah, I mean, but here that's in it. LA, every or teacher is writing a screenplay. Or the te I'm doing this for three years until I can get out. Yeah. <laughs> it's an exit strategy. Yeah, but mine were always, I always had, actually, that's how I got into it. I had an English teacher that said, You're all screwing around. Why don't you write down some of your funny stories and just read them to the class and I'll give you credit? I said, Oh, okay. And it was the first time in my life I enjoyed doing homework. And you know, I sat down and 
read the stories, and you know, I mean, it's kid stuff. So a couple people laugh. He says, "Oh, look. he says, you, you ever think of being a comedy writer?" And I said, "No, <laughs> no, not in Andover, Massachusetts. I mean, no, yeah, it doesn't even seem possible, you know." So, so yeah, I, I was lucky. I had good teachers. I, I don't. I'm sure there are plenty of teachers like that still. I just don't run into them like I did on a regular basis when yeah, I was a kid. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, wrapping it up for real, what's uh, coming up on Jay Leno's Garage? Well, I'm starting a new game show, You Bet Your Life. That starts in September. That'll be basically. Well, let's talk about You Bet Your Life then. It's, it's the old Groucho Marx game show. I, I loved it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's basically, with the duck. The duck comes from yeah, the ceiling. Yeah, it's basically Jay walking, you know. In that you're interacting with regular folks? Yeah, with regular folks, and yeah. And there's a game element involved, so I think it'll be fun. Are you? Have you already done these? Are they already no, in the I camp? Start, uh, we start July 26th. Where are you doing them? Here in town. I mean, uh, at a studio, though? Yeah, six shows a day for 12 weeks. Where, where, where are you doing them? What studio? Uh, in, like in Pacoima, something studios. I mean, yeah. Oh, not some... Okay, I got it. <laughs> I mean, really, the business has changed that way. You know, you don't, you don't get the, you know... <laughs> no, I do know what you mean. Oh, Lucky Strike is your sponsor. Here's a carton of cigarettes. You know, you don't get... It's not like the, those days anymore. You don't get the free, Alpo. You don't get the park, the perks, the case of Alpo. You don't get any of that. Uh, six shows a day. So what is your what is your fulfillment? How many do you have to do? 180. <sighs> Holy crap. That's a lot. It's 180, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. Who's writing on it? Uh, We've had a lot of your uh, former writers here, uh, is why I asked. John Max, Andy McElfresh. Cool. Actually, it's pretty much a skeleton crew. So it, it's going to be good. I think it'll be fun. And no politics. So that's what we're trying to Yeah. You know, comedy is so divided. It's like, Jesus. Well, that's what all those shows have become. That's one of the reasons we're doing this. It's kind of to well, sort you know, of it's stay funny away from because it. you, in my day, we prided ourselves in people not knowing your politics. Hmm? So you can make fun of both sides. You get angry letters from each side. You know? Yeah, 100%. Uh, now you've got to come out and say, you know, I, I mean, I watched Fallon get beaten up for not b- being really hard on Trump. I mean, he's. He was funny with... Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, all right. All okay, right. so you... It's, He's not the guy for that, though. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, why, let Jimmy be Jimmy. Uh, yeah, exactly. And now I think... He, now, now it's now Trump is gone and he's back and that show's back again where it used to be. So. You you go on that uh, on that version of The Tonight Show sometimes. Is yeah, that fun for you? Yeah, I go on you? as a comic. I don't go on as... Uh, you know, my day, <laughs> we did the job. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. No, nobody cares. I mean, you, that's... That's a me. good point. You're as good as your last joke. I go out as a stand-up and I do stand-up and maybe sit down in a quick panel story or something. That's but, what we love seeing you on the panel. Well, you are so good on panel. Well, I like doing panel. I mean, I, it's good to have jokes. I mean, the worst thing is when we would get guests on and their agent would say, he's just, he knows Jay, he's just going to talk. <laughs> and then you ask him a question, why did you ask me that? Well, you didn't tell me, nobody told me not to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if you'd said there were ground rules, what, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we run into it from time to time. Yeah. Most people are pretty good, but yeah. I can imagine yeah, yeah. <laughs> the personalities you used to deal with. Yeah. Is there anybody that was there anybody that was like uh, in the history of you doing the Tonight Show that was a surprise handful? Some people I probably anticipated handfuls. Is there anybody who was a surprise? Oh, I'm trying to think. Um, I don't know people that were bad. Well, bad. What is that? I can't imagine you're about to say some people were bad on the Tonight Show. Well, I mean, if you don't want to be there, don't come to the show. I mean, they, you know, they don't prepare. Oh. They don't have any stories, you know. Yeah. Um, Not prepared for a talk show appearance. That is it. That is a whole thing. Yeah. I mean, it's more fun when you get, I like politics. So to me, I always enjoyed, you know, the first time we had Barack Obama on, it was great because he was just a senator and he just announced he was running. So he and he came by himself in a rent a car mm. with his jacket over his shoulder, you know. And he walked out. And he said, "Your name's Barack Hussein Obama. Uh, you're a black guy from Chicago. Nobody's ever heard of. Oh yeah, you'll be a two-term president. <laughs> and your middle name's Hussein, really? And, and, <laughs> you know." And he was really funny. But I'll tell you a funny story. So we became friends. The next time he came to the show, he was president. And the whole parking lot was tented. So no one can see from a satellite where it was. Oh my know. God! But it, it, uh, the first time he was there, he gave me his cell phone. So I was telling people this story. Well, he gave me his cell phone. He said, "We should call him up." 
I said, well, I'm not going to call him up. He's president of the United States. I said, I'm sure the cell phone isn't even connected anymore. I said, well, let's call it. And I go, I'm not going to call it. And I was like, all right, all right. Who's I'll, egging you on? Come I'll on, tell us. Who, who are you with? Well, nobody you know. All right. So, hey, let me call. So I, call. <laughs> I dial a number. Hello, Brock here. Miss, Miss President, it's Jay Leno. Jay, what can I do for you? Nothing. You gave me this number. I'm going to throw it away. I'm look. I'm very sorry, Mr. Brett. And he laughed. And he, he was. A, I mean, you know, he wanted a great to see man. if it was a real number. That's yeah, legit. Yeah, yeah, very funny. That's very legitimate. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, that was really funny. That was really. You, funny. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you. Is there anybody you wanted to get that you never were able to get? I can't imagine anybody wouldn't do the Tonight Show, but it, it's got to be somebody. Oh yeah, just about everybody. Yeah, we had just about everybody. When I said a surprise handful before, uh, the one that came to mind was uh, when Bobcat Goldthwait lit the uh, the couch on fire. Well, you know, was I, that I, planned? That was, no, that was rather <laughs> disappointing to me because Goldthwait uh, eats through lighter fluid all over the place and yep. set the couch on fire. Okay, well, the fire marshal went crazy. He wanted him arrested. Mm-hmm. I mean, thrown in jail. And I no no he's just trying to be a comic and uh, and uh, and of course right away I became oh Mister ruin the moment you know Leno you know Goldthwait is being hilarious and Goldthwait attacked me and then of course once you get Howard Stern everybody you know, you know oh I, I, it is that Howard Stern got yeah, involved I, didn't I was the that. bad guy because. I was the corporate guy. I was the, you know. Here's what I remember. It was the time when Arsenio was whatever. He would get canceled or whatever. And Bobcat flipped out on his show and tore the set apart. That's what I remember. Yeah, yeah. And then I remember he lit this chair on fire. All you did was put the damn fire out. I wouldn't say that that's... that's, that's <laughs> he right. literally poured and water re- on the I, fire. I really fought to have him not get arrested. Yeah. And he did. Uh, but th- they don't understand. Oh, a comic is just pushing the envelope. Oh, he was just trying to get a rise out of people. He wasn't trying to start a uh, four alarm blaze here. They don't get that probably. You know, there's nothing harder than writing a joke, and people do anything to avoid writing a joke because <laughs> is that it's what the it, hardest thing. It, it is. When I see people do things, where I go, you know, if you just said something funny, it would have oh, canceled my God. all of that out. But how many times you see comedians do other things? Other than be funny, it were, if they were funny, it would have solved the whole problem. You know, you mentioned Arsenio. I'll tell you a funny Arsenio story. Yeah, you know, Arsenio and I were great friends. And then when he got the, he got his show, and I was against him. It was I'm going to kick Leno's ass. All that kind of, you know, all that stuff started in the paper, right? Again, that felt more like the paper. Yeah. So it says back and forth, back and forth. You know. So I watched his first show, and he had Brooke Shields, and it was really funny. Arsenio, was excellent, and. And he said something like, this show is about the funk. It's about, you're not going to see Byron Manilow's ass on this show. He said that, and everybody cheered. I remember this. Okay. So then, like three months go by, and I'm watching us. Because you always watch to see who they're going to have. And I said, and next week, Barry Manilow will be on the show, right? So I dial the phone. I, got, I call the office the next day. I said, no, I speak to us. I said, who is it? Jay Leno. Uh, he doesn't want to speak to you. I, I put him on the phone. So, so I said, "What do you want to ask?" What do you, I, I said, what do you want? What you want, man? He's like, I go, "Ooh, come on, very man." Well, he fell down laughing. And, 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 Ooh, he wants to see Barry Manilow's ass on this show. Ooh. And I said, "You know, because you need every guest." Yes, hundred percent. It was just really funny, and then and then we were good friends from that point on again. Broke so, the ice. Yeah, you know, it was great. I know I love Arsenio. Very funny guy. Uh, when I remember when his show came back, I feel like. In fact, no, I know this to be a fact. I remember, I, did. I can't remember how it all came down, but I remember you were, not only did you do the show, you came out and told him he got picked up for another season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they ended up not doing it. You know, but- that, that was a good lesson because these shows are hugely expensive to do. And the nice thing about The Tonight Show was it was all paid for. It had been amortized over the last 60 years. Yeah. You had an 18-piece band. You couldn't have that anymore. You couldn't have this. You couldn't have the thing. I mean, uh, just all the equipment, all the engineers. It was all paid for, and the show made money and all that kind of stuff. So fine. Same thing with the Arsenio show. Then when Arsenio came back, well, you can't have a 12-piece band. You got to have yeah. three pieces. No, you, you, he couldn't. He wasn't even allowed to play uh, you know, some uh, sitcom. The theme, 
you know, bum, bum, ba, gotta, gotta bum, pay bum, for ba, it, ba, right? Ba. Oh, you gotta pay for that. Yep. You know, so but there's just some generic porn music. You know, hundred percent, hundred percent music. You, you, you couldn't you couldn't have twelve writers anymore. Now you got two or three. Oh, and the that, dynamics change all around. Yeah, and it just and now you're just doing a cheaper version of this of your old show, which doesn't look as good. You right. know, Arsenio was just as good. Agreed. But but it was hard to you know. That's why when I have the Tonight Show, I go, let me do a car show. It's completely different from everything else I do. So no one would say, well, I like them on this better. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you do enjoy Jay Leno's Garage, though, right? Everyone I know enjoys the hell out of you on your show. I, I like it. It's fun because it's my hobby. You know, if you can make your hobby your job, it's not a job, you know. I guess, or it kills the hobby, which you haven't let it do. A lot of people, it does. You know, if they're into music or something, they start, I'm going to go be a professional musician. I'm like, I fucking hate music. Man. Well, you, you know, know, I don't. I, it's like I like to make love, but I don't want to be a gynecologist. You know <laughs> oh, he's a little too much. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, a little, it's more information than I need to know. You know what I mean? So I keep. I like the mystery. Mm. I have no idea how the bureau lights work. Everything's fine. Leave that to the expert. Sure. Fine. Let me do my part. I'll just do my part. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. And the, the, rest takes, the rest takes care of itself. Yeah. Uh, is there anything new on Jay Leno's Garage that we want to tell people about? Other than just maybe just watch, follow it on all the uh, stuff and watch yeah, the show? Yeah, I mean, we start again in the middle of September and uh, come back for another season. So. Oh, you're, but are you recording now? Are you filming now? We just finished recording. Now. Oh, okay. Just finished the season. Uh, I do Jay Leno's Garage on YouTube, which is more technical, technically oriented, just about the about the car, and then you do Jail's Garage on CNBC, which is celebrity-driven and you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, I guess it never really occurred to me that you do them separately. In my mind, you were just creating content, and they put it wherever they put it, but you actually are producing separate shows by oh, doing yeah. that. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been doing Jay Leno's Garage on YouTube since 2007. So, yeah. So that's, wow. That's 52 a year. Good so we Lord, got man. about 1,100 videos in there now, yeah. <laughs> So you're slowing down finally, right? <laughs> no, yeah, no, not even a little bit. No, but it's not really. It's not like you're slow. It's not hard work. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy for you. It's I think fun. it's great. Yeah, it's like you do this. It's not really work, is it? No. Well, no, I guess not. I mean, this isn't. This is, I'm nervous as hell today. If you couldn't tell, this me sitting here with you made me well, so I, nervous when I, I we don't first sat down. Why be, uh, what, think I was going to attack you or something? <laughs> No, it has nothing to do with you. I think it's more me and my own. Like, look at look at this ridiculous that I am. To, inside, <laughs> I agree with you on your little video. That I don't want to be like Rupert Pupkin, some guy doing it in his home like a weirdo. Well, but then, you, but then, then here we Rupert are. Pupkin. And yeah. yeah. Right. So, right. but I share that same sentiment with you. That's right. So I guess uh, maybe there's a little self awareness going on that makes me. Oh, it is weird. It is everything you there said. You, go, mate. you take the budget away, and this is all you have. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's true. That's what happened to our. Uh, yeah, I mean, Arsenio show fail for lack of money nothing else yeah he just wasn't able to he have his biggest set he was yeah. his biggest sound is but you know and and plus the business changes too like what i give you an example when we did jaywalking we just go out the street hey sir can we talk to you come on over here now that person has to be vetted have they ever oh, yeah. been arrested? Right. Is there a child molestation thing in their past somewhere? Otherwise, you hired them and put them on your show. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's like crazy. Because mm. that was the fun part. When we would go out, you know, after the show, it may be, we tape from 5 to 6. We go out at 7 o'clock. You guys go to the smokehouse? <laughs> no, go to the smokehouse? <laughs> never the smokehouse. Usually Melrose <laughs> Avenue. And we'd be there for maybe 90 minutes. We'd talk to 20 people. And minimum 13 would be good. Sometimes more. You always got something from each person, hmm. you know. And it was just picking people at random that were gregarious and whatnot. Really? But now you'd have to pick them first, vet them, then somehow surprise them, <laughs> which is not really going to be a <laughs> It's not possible. No. I mean, I'll tell you a funny story with that. We, we're trying to find a, uh, a date for Kevin Eubanks. Right? Kev, Kev, you're a singer. We, we got to get you a date. Oh, a, <laughs> a go, lady date. I got, I remember, yeah, sure. Let's I go you. jaywalking for you. <laughs> So we got out of Melrose. We're talking to we're talking to women. Hey, do you know Kevin Eubank? Oh yeah. I see this one girl, African American girl, beautiful. I mean, beautiful, cashmere sweater, very elegant, very nice looking, really expensive slack, you know, whatever, some kind of designer. I mean, the whole package, you know. I said, do you know? Oh, I love Kevin Eubanks. 
And then would you go out with him? And she says, yes, I would. You know, but, well, okay. So next night, hey, Kev, tomorrow night on the show, we're going to da 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 You know, I, so I'm talking to this woman. She's an actress, okay? So now she's coming on the show live to go on the date with Kevin, okay? So I, she, I said, what have you been in? She said, I'll send you some of my movies. You see where this is going. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> we get... the. A huge, beautiful, beautiful woman. A, a huge box of the, like the most graphic <laughs> porn tapes. Yeah, I we're mean, here in the valley, aren't we? Just, I mean, it was like, oh my god! I mean, like, you know, I, I, I'm thinking, where is that in a woman? Where, 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 <laughs> what part is this? <laughs> I never, I, I've never even seen it. Is it that upside part. down? What is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm thinking, where's, and it was like, oh my god! I mean, the most graphic. <laughs> You know, like, is that the woman? And there were the three other people there. But other <laughs> men were oh. You know, and, and I'm thinking, and she sends this, I mean, really, a box about half the size of your desk with maybe 75 tapes. You know, so what, what are you doing with this? Uh, so, I mean, we should be Because one house. wouldn't have done it, right? Yeah. This is who I am. Yeah. And she was, I mean, she was very nice and sort of got the joke. And Kev, this is so-and-so. And, -so, and uh, Dad, you, and I kept going, Dad, Kev, your dad's a deacon in the church, right? Yes, and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, and because Kevin's in on the joke, and I got it. I don't think anybody else did, unless they knew her work. You know. Oh yeah, well, but that's just it. Maybe you're, you're probably if she had that much work, you're probably oh, <laughs> the only few that didn't. Oh yeah, know who she was. It was hilarious because it just, I mean, the most elegant, you know, looked like a model, you know, the, kind of, the cheekbones and just beautiful, you know, okay, and smart, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, oh, it's, it's, you know, hilarious. I can't even imagine the stories you have over the years. I, 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 I wish you had a podcast. Is that anything you would ever do? No, no. You have no interest in that well, shit Well, I'll tell you anymore. the best. My favorite one was, um, I've told this story, but uh, we're, trying to book, we're trying to book Kathy Lee Gifford on the show. And I had been doing Kathy Lee jokes. And you remember when Frank Gifford got caught having an affair? Yeah, remember, I remember all of it. Remember yeah. That kind of, well, there's one joke that just... They all lived in my town. Like, I lived in the same town well, oh, Dave right. used to it's live in, right. so right. Kathy and Frank right. lived right. down right. the street. Right, so th there was one joke that just incensed Kathy Gifford. The joke was, I said, uh-oh, uh Kathy Gifford just found out there's no such thing as Tuesday Night Football. That was the joke. So, the, so that, that joke made her really... That, mad. yeah, that's... You know, again... <laughs> That just made me really mad. So I, so I go in the booking meeting. You know, there'd be a booking meeting every day. I said to, to, to um, Tracy Fisk, I said, Tracy, oh. see if we get Kathleen Gifford. I, I, I just bought Kathleen. She won't do it. She's furious at you. She, she, she won't come on here. I said, well, we'll put her on ER first. E, right after ER, first guest Thursday night, because ER was huge. Yeah. And she said, no, she won't do it. I said, oh. So I said, well, let me try. So I go, into, I go out and I say to one of the, Intern says, "Give me Kathy Lee's phone number." Okay, I go back. And oh the my I dial God! The phone. Uh, Kathy Lee, yes. Oh, I could see I said, it. <laughs> I said, "It's uh, Jay Leno." <laughs> Hi, Jay. How are you? <laughs> I say, "Good." I said, "Listen, uh, we'd love to have you on the show Thursday night right after ER." Jay, I would love that. That would be fantastic. <laughs> and I said, "Oh, great. Oh, okay. So this Thursday we can book that." Yes, of course. Yes. All right. Terrific. Thanks. I'm thinking, well, how hard was that? I think I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I go back into the booking meeting. I say to Tracy, Tracy, I, I can let you all you people go. You know, I'm just giving her a hard time. I said, I just booked Kathy Lee. She's coming on Thursday. Tracy goes, what? I just booked Kathy Lee. She's coming on Thursday. She confirmed it. She goes, hey, I just spoke to Kathy Lee again. She's never coming on with you. I said, what are you talking I just spoke to her. She said, I don't know who you spoke to, but it wasn't Kathy Lee. <laughs> so, so back to the intern, I go, uh, whose number did you give me? Kathleen Crosby? Ah! Crosby. I, said, I said, that's incredible. Hasn't been on for like like 25 years. <laughs> now I have to call Kathleen Crosby back. Sorry. And, and <laughs> Sorry, you're not relevant. Explain my way. Oh, yeah. It was like horrible. It was like a nightmare. It was like a nightmare. Went from no shot to, of course, Jay. Oh, Jay, we'd love to. I was like, oh, it was great. I, I, uh, oh, yeah. Just stuff like that was always really funny. Something you told a story once. I can't remember where, but I, I know I heard it uh, on one of the panel shows, and and it, it relates kind of actually to the. Do you have anything interesting happen on the plane? This story, if I have it right, uh, this sort of thing happens to me all the time. But were you falling asleep and somebody threw you a bunch of money and said, "Here, uh, read this thing on the Tonight Show"? 
Does this oh, yeah. sound familiar at all? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you, do you, can you can you tell the rest of it? Because it things happen to me in life where. I'm, I mind my own business. I kind of really don't care what the fuck anybody else is doing. Oh, yeah. so, I'm kind of in yeah, my own head. And, like oh, much, go ahead. Like, you know, I'm, I'm just in. And there's a note, and like, two, here's $200 for your trouble. Can you book my brother or something? Like that? I don't know what it was. I said, what? It's something so, like a charity or something that was worthwhile, I yeah, think. Yeah, so I... But I, you, that's not how the system works. You can't do that. No, I know. So I have this money. So <laughs> I said to the flight, did you see who left it? No. Uh, okay, so now, now I'm walking down the aisle and I see a guy. Did, did you just give me two hundred dollars? What? Did you, I said, did you give me two hundred? No. I, now he thinks I'm asking for two hundred dollars. He goes, I don't have two hundred dollars. No, no. Did you? I, I got some. Was this from you? I want to give it back. And I can see the guy. Oh, it wasn't you. Okay, because I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay. So now, now I'm making my way down the plane. I can't figure out who it is. I have this, this stupid money. Oh, yeah, I had so many things happen on the plane. You know the, the weirdest one? But it, see, it made it out like you were just minding your own business. And then it made it out like, oh, I want to meet everybody in coach all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah. So I, all of a sudden now I'm Jay Leno campaigning for president of first class over oh, here yeah, is what yeah. it looked well, that's like. that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I don't know that those were your words in your bit, but that's what I took Something from this happened, moment. Yeah, and that shit was, happens yeah. to me all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All of a sudden you, you, you find yourself in a pitch. You're pitching yourself to oh, someone for no well, reason. Well, one day I remember sitting on the plane. I just mind my own business. I'm in the aisle seat, you know, and... People, oh, chill. So, yeah. So, and they hear the flight and say, God, it's Jay Leno. I think he's really pissed that nobody's <laughs> recognizing him. I go, oh, my God. No, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not pissed. It's, it's not. I'll tell you the weirdest one. I was in that kind of really awful American Airlines first class where it's like three seats that look like the seats in economy, except there's a divider. Right? And there's a woman over here who's just pounding down drinks, right? So I'm sitting there, and I see this woman stand up, and she's trying to take her sweater off, but she's got no bra on it. Oh, for fuck's sake. So <laughs> she takes off the sweater and the shirt, like this, and she puts it in the overhead. Now she sits down like this with no shirt on. And I'm just, I look over the guy next to me, and two of us are like this. Like, what do we do? Is this like a, so then you slide and go, miss, miss. And the woman, what? She starts screaming. Like someone did it to her? Like someone did it to her. Oh, my right? God. She can't hear you. The, the first one she sees is Jay Leno. Oh, I hear people like, what up? I don't know what. Jay Leno. So I, I know oh, my to God. Grab, and I hear, I, I tried to grab that girl. Again. But I just hear people. I'm going, I, not, I didn't do anything. Now, now I'm like, I'm yelling my innocence. Which is, which is just making that it That is work. exactly the same. Oh, oh yeah. That's yeah, exactly the same. Yeah, just that. like a nightmare. Yeah, just so nightmare. Uh, all right. Uh, now, you have definitely done the time. Thank you so, so, right. so, well, so, you. so thank much. You, uh, so this counts as two times, so I don't have to come back again. That's right. I just want to make sure we covered it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Seriously, it means the world. Thank you so well, much. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Oh, I'm bringing it back with the bubbles because that was amazing. That was amazing. Hey, where'd Jay Leno go? What the hell? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'll kill the bubbles there. And in a second, they'll stop falling. Here we go. Uh, all right, all right. Let's wrap it up. That was amazing. That was amazing. Uh, huge, huge, huge thank yous to Jay Leno for being here, my goodness, um, and being so open and generous with his his time and his information there. <laughs> he really opened the vault on a few things that I was just pretty surprised about. Uh, how was it for you? It was really, he had great stories that I hadn't heard before. And then for having him here, having Jay Leno come to us, crazy. Shut up about it now. Huge thanks to Jay Leno. Huge thanks to Auto Kennel, by the way. None of this would be possible. This interview would not have been brought to you if it weren't for Auto Kennel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, as, in addition to that, my goodness, I have to mention uh, coverageforyourtoys.com. They say all that separates men and boys is the coverage for their toys. St. Clair Insurance has coverage for your toys. In this case, we're talking about the collector car market. Your car is worth more than it used to be. Go check it out and then call coverageforyourtoys.com. You'd have to go to your computer for that. Although you can call things on your computer these days. I don't know. Go to the computer, find out the phone number, then give it a call. Coverageforyourtoys.com. 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 Uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention that my name is Jay Ryan from Late Night Playset telling you to please like, subscribe, and comment below. This feeds the internet algorithm and eventually us as well. 
I'm going to get the smoke out the right side. There we go. Uh, hey, please uh, uh, be a pal. Do all that stuff. It'll be fire. That's what the smoke's about. It'll be fire. Um, <laughs> tomorrow is Friday. We're going to be up at Breakfast Club. You see the shirt right there. We talked about it earlier. Uh, to This is crazy. We are on fire. I'm going to do the Bill O'Reilly thing. To play us out, <laughs> I'll do it live. Um, here is a video from Breakfast Club if you've never been before and you want to check it out sometime. Here's what it's like. Otherwise, I love you, Mrs. Ryan. We love you, the internet audience. Thank you so much for watching. We would not do this if it weren't for you. It's that simple. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, we love you. We'll see you out there. Love one another. Did I say that? Love one another. One time for my folks on the daily grind. Something special to relieve your mind. Through these difficult days and times, feeling freedom is hard to find. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Dog barking on the neighbor's lawn Then I know that I what? That I gotta get going Get a million red lights and punch the clock Then wait for eight hours till it's time to rock I guess I better wise up for my time's up And tell a nine to five that it can kiss my what? Cause life is for living, not waiting to die And new beginnings are in short supply So go find your why, get your piece of the pie And never give another minute till the days gone by Oh my, oh me, it's beautiful to be In a frame of mind where nothing worries me So hurry please jump to my side Because I can't stop, won't stop kicking it live Someday everything gonna go my way You tighten that back brace And you could say thank you But never say please Gotta make your side hustle Become your main squeeze Don't sleep on the present Cause you know it's a gift 20 years of school And then they put you on the day shift But they missed the mark In my estimation Cause a job ain't always An occupation It's so true I told the whole crew It's old news Less flavor than tofu So I grind from the bottom Of my soul like soap shoes Till my bank look like Boku Sudoku Until my pocket's deeper Than your favorite Jinkos And I'm iced out Like Rio Tinto Until I got paper Like I'm living at Kinko's I go 24-7 Not the way that a Cinco So everything Go my way This is crap There won't be no boss rules to obey All work and no play Make me go insane yeah, how did that work? <laughs> yeah. I got a case on Friday.